Oh, hi. Hey, everybody. My name's Ken Brandt, and I'm an artist. Okay, so the painting that I'm working on right now is, um, I don't really don't have a title for her. Uh, I'm going to call her a Little Girl in a Field. And the reason that I'm doing this painting is my sister-in-law has Chiari male formation. She has a benefit coming up. And I said I would do a painting to auction off for the benefit uh, to help out. So my wife suggested a painting that would be uh, a little bit more um, liked by the, a general audience. I tend to... Um, well, I like to paint um, nudes, landscapes, uh, portraiture, and the like. And uh, so I thought um, this would be uh, a little bit more, uh, it's a general subject matter, so it'll be appeal to a larger audience. Um, and it has some landscape in there. It's, uh, there's a figure involved, so it's well within my comfort zone. So this was, a, uh, I thought, uh, a good painting to do. And basically what I have here is I have the underlaying the underlayment, uh, the underpainting done, um, and I'm going to show you uh, through time lapse uh, this process and um, uh, how we got to where it is right now. And then uh, the next video will actually be applying some color and uh, working on some detail. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, if you happen to like my painting process and enjoy watching what I do, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my video. Here I am starting the underpainting process, and in painting an underpainting, that being the first layer of paint applied to a canvas or board, and it functions as a base for other layers of paint. It acts as a foundation for your painting and is a great way to start your painting off with some built-in contrast and tonal values, which is exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. It's a technique that was widely used by old masters as a way to develop a plan for future color placement and to establish certain values and tones within a painting's color palette. An underpainting, if used correctly, is a great way to unite color values in the overall painting and add a subject color key to the painting that will create a tonal dominance of the painting. The underpainting develops the composition, the placement, and value relationships at the outset. It's the ultimate foundational approach. When attempting an underpainting, one of the best ways to start is by thinning your paint with a bit of turpentine, which will thin the pigment and then lift off a bit and blend in with later layers of paint, as you continue with your painting highlighting the underpainting and the extra work you've done. Other thinning mediums can help as well, but need to be applied lightly or you risk the outer layers cracking and peeling as time goes on. The paint you choose is also important in underpainting. A poor underpainting can make the overall painting muddy. A paint that mixes well and has a great high pigment load can really make a difference. Uh, oil paints are um, perfect for mixing and layering, layer uh, and layer terrifically. However, if you're new to painting and are just trying uh, things out, um, certain uh, oil colors um, and brands might fit your budget a bit better and you will still get a great quality paint for mixing and layering. Classic underpaintings is uh, monochromatic. It's made with only a single pigment color. The pigment is applied thinly and in an additive or subtractive matter to achieve a full range of values. The particular pigment color, however, is a color so it will profoundly influence the color direction of the painting. There are three general approaches to choosing a color for the underpainting. Two approaches are monochromatic, one using a color that is similar to the dominant color of the scene, and the other using a color that contrasts with the overall color, which is basically what I'm doing here, and I will explain that in a minute. The third approach is called two-color underpainting, which I won't be discussing today. There are many colors that are traditionally used for underpainting burnt or raw umber, burnt sienna or ultramarine blue. I chose the burnt sienna and I will explain why. Almost any pigment can be used as long as it's capable of producing an adequate value range from light to dark. 
yellow or other medium tone pigments, for example, can't do this. The broader question, however, is whether the underpainting color should be similar to the dominant color of the subject or contrast with it. Um, I chose to contrast with it. Uh, this is a favorite approach among landscape painters. Rather than selecting a color for the underpainting that corresponds to the dominant color of the scene, the painter intentionally chooses one that contrasts. In a scene with lots of green, for example, the painter might choose a complementary color like alizarin or burnt sienna, which is exactly why I chose burnt sienna. The idea is that the underlying red can react with subsequent layers of green, adding vibration and interest to the color tapestry. The red might even show through the final layers of color in the many areas. The advantages of doing it this way is it can provide exciting color reactions as the subsequent layers of colors react with the underlying color. The disadvantages are like the monochromatic underpainting, initial strokes of full color may seem out of place until enough coverage is achieved. As I said, I chose burnt sienna. The only difference is that I added some ivory black to darken the color where I left it necessary for a darker value and I added titanium white where I had lighter values. In some cases during this painting I found that simply wiping the paint off the canvas with a paper towel gave me the best outcome where the higher and lighter values were concerned.
well, there you have it. Uh, I hope you enjoy watching uh, this process so far, and I hope you uh, watch the next video where we apply some color and some detail into this painting. And uh, thank you again. And again, if you uh, enjoy watching my uh, painting process, don't forget to like and subscribe to my video. Thank you.